Hey folks, um, I've been on vacation, so you haven't had too much privacy TV, so you've gotten all kinds of other interesting social media consumption and work done. Um, but I'm back, so just a couple of quick things uh, today. I am busy all day with meetings from different groups that are working on privacy legislation. And um, in one way, it's really exciting because for those of us who've generally supported the notion of federal comprehensive privacy legislation because we think state by state efforts make no sense in a global world um, or uh, who uh, occasionally see targeted uh, efforts to regulate one particular sector uh, the notion that we recognize that we need a, a national scale piece of legislation um, uh, has certainly been something uh, on my radar screen but it's always seemed uh, like there wasn't industry consensus um, there wasn't government consensus I don't know if there is, but part because of the reaction to the new California legislation, where at least some set of industry um, looks at that and says, are we now going to see 50 different versions of that, the way data breach laws all uh, in some way replicated with different nuances and created a lot of complication. Uh, so there's uh, an outpouring groups who traditionally very concerned about too much regulation, the United States Chamber of Commerce uh, announced uh, that they're working on privacy principles uh, with possibly uh, that effort leading to legislation. Um, uh, the information technology uh, uh, industry uh, held a big convening. Um, CEOs of Salesforce, Workday, um, Tim Cook at Apple. As a result, we're seeing a lot of outreach, uh, folks on the Hill who certainly have reached out to us and a lot of others saying, what do you think? Where do you start? Uh, do you start with GDPR? Do you start with the FTC framework? Um, uh, do you take uh, some version of California and it, it make some changes, add some pieces to it? Um, lots of interest, um, the White House, the Department of Commerce, uh, different trade groups. So it's taken up a lot of my time and, and we're starting to give some thought ourselves to, uh, uh, is there a consensus? Are we on a path? Uh, is there a political will? Um, what are the kinds of ideas that are part of this? Uh, so uh, it's interesting. It all could come to nothing because indeed Congress has got a lot of stuff on its plate. They'll be fighting over the um, latest Supreme Court nomination. Uh, they'll be battling over the Trump agenda. Uh, so it's not clear that there's a, an easy path, um, but it's perhaps the beginning of a process. So stay tuned. Uh, you'll be hearing a lot more from everybody on this uh, and certainly from us here at FPF. Uh, the other Less weighty news, but um, uh, I do a lot of reading, or at least uh, over vacation and on the weekends, I try to catch up on a lot of uh, longer form reading. Uh, and it might be interesting to occasionally um, share some of the books um, that I'm uh, reading. Uh, we used to actually have in Washington, a number of us privacy uh, folks, a, a privacy book club, uh, because uh, you know, you got a bunch of books like I do, probably piled up on your bed stand and you're not getting to them because there's light affair or there's Netflix to, uh, to go through. Uh, and, um, well, if you know you have to read it because some of your colleagues are going to be having a discussion, uh, so once every month or two months, uh, 15 or 20 of us would get together, well, maybe 10 or 12 would show up, and we'd have some snacks and drink some beer and uh, talk about some of the interesting books. Uh, over time, it became too hard to schedule. Maybe we'll try to do it again. Um, but I'm still doing some of the reading, um, and so let me share with you two books. Here's one. Um, which I just read on the uh, uh, Metro on the way into work today, a uh, really short uh, book. Uh, well, I read 110 pages, there's a little bit more. It's called The Zero Dollar Car. Um, we have a big mobility project, Warren Smith on our team, uh, runs a connected car work. You know, in the future, um, you talk to any of the auto companies, they'll tell you they're not in the auto business, they're in the mobility business, drones, autonomous, right? Uh, you saw Uber and Lyft both buying uh, bicycle companies, scooter companies, um, so public transportation, we were just in Tel Aviv, the deputy mayor there talked to us about uh, at one of the events we were running about how uh, the future transportation comes to you uh, or combines um, a metro, a bus, a taxi, a scooter. Uh, in any event, uh, this book, uh, which I came across called The Zero Dollar Car. So this guy, John Ellis, was the global technologist a number of years ago at Ford. Uh, and uh, had spent his career before that at Motorola and was very sensitive to developers, uh, platforms, you know, the notion that third parties, you know, build value on top of platforms. Um, 
he uh, claims that there is so much data because of all the sensors that are available uh, that just like today, you get access to free Facebook, you get ac access to free Google, uh, free apps, uh, because your data is subsidizing uh, that value. Um, his argument is that there is huge value from the data about you in cars, where you're going, what you're doing, um, uh, so that in the end of days, we will actually have free cars subsidized by your data. Now, I think he's taking it to an extreme. Um, when I've looked at the economics at Facebook and Google, they make a lot of money because they have so many users, but they don't make a huge amount of money from each individual users. Um, uh, uh, you know, um, if uh, we divided up Facebook's revenue per user, I think globally it ends up being seven dollars um, twenty or thirty more. You know, in the U.S., other places like that. But you know, it's not thousands of thousands. It adds up to billions because there are two billion of us or however many. Uh, you know, on uh, uh, Facebook, um, so it becomes a huge business, but it's not a huge amount of money uh, such that Facebook would give me a free computer. Um, uh, you know, even um, Chromebooks, uh, where obviously there's a, um, a built-in uh, relationship with uh, Google, uh, these are not free. So the idea that you'll get a free vehicle in return to your data seems a bit far-fetched. I mean, nobody has ever offered me a big discount on my car if I put bumper stickers, you know, uh, or digital bumper stickers. Maybe that'll change. Again, I was just in Israel. There are 500 mobility startups uh, in Israel, at least, behind, you know, Mobileye, the uh, company that Intel bought for $17 billion, but huge tail of other companies. Uh, and uh, we held a roundtable with 30 or 40 leading startups to talk about data issues. And one guy there showed me a digital license plate uh, where the license plate carries information and can update. And right now, it, it's only useful information, you know, like that. Um, uh, but uh, you can see, you know, advertising. I, I'm a little skeptical. Again, um, if there's already a lot of data being collected, and I don't see anybody uh, offering me big incentives. Um, but it is true that people are buying cars because of uh, the fact that they're told that it'll work well with their iPhone or work well with their Android. And so you're making a $30,000 decision, you know, based on um, how it pairs well, you know, with your seven, six, $700 phone. So anyway, uh, he maybe overstates it, but it really makes an interesting read uh, to understand the amount of data and the way innovators in this area are starting to think about the future. So it, it kind of provoked me a little bit, uh, but I think a, a good, interesting read. The $0 car, how the revolution in big data will change your life. We'll post a link to it. Um, the second one, a little more serious. Um, this one is free. Um, it, it costs some money if you want it printed and mailed to you, but it's available as an ebook from the Human Rights Agency, the uh, European uh, Union Agency for Fundamental Rights. Um, uh, they put out uh, previously a handbook on European data protection law. They updated it now to include uh, GDPR as well as recent court cases. So the reason I, I point to this, there's a lot of books you can um, get to learn more about the GDPR. But what these folks did, and again, these aren't the data regulators or the commission, you know, these are the folks who oversee the enforcement of uh, fundamental rights, including human rights, including privacy uh, in uh, in Europe. So they're, you know, they're, they're effective and authoritative. Um, but they weave in the European Union law created by the Court of Justice, created by the Court of Human Rights. Um, I see lots of GDPR consultants or even, you know, lawyers that are new to privacy, um, you know, opining and debating um, uh, because they're reading the text of the GDPR. And the reality is the GDPR exists in a court system, in a European-wide court system. And although some of the language is new, much of the language uh, in GDPR has existed in previous state law. Uh, previous member state law, uh, and provisions of those laws have been challenged, have gone up to the top courts. And so absolutely where there are decisions about scope, about personal information, about processor, about controller, um, you know, some of these cases are well known, right? The, the Castea Google case um, uh, about the right to be forgotten, um, uh, you know, which has important um, conclusions about who is a controller, um, what is public information. So I recommend this, get it for free. Again, we'll post a, a link. Uh, you can just download the ebook. I, I like 
having things in paper. Uh, so um, uh, I can read it over the weekend when I'm uh, off the grid for the Sabbath, but uh, not so off the grid that I don't mind peeking at some good reading. Uh, so um, as they go through European data protection law, certainly a lot of it is about the GDPR, but it's not solely about GDPR. It's about European data protection law. So other relevant um, European wide law in context that matters is included, but the court cases that are relevant uh, are covered at the right locations. So really, really uh, useful. I've been finding it a, a good reference and um, uh, I'm gonna try to sit and read through the entire thing um, maybe uh, maybe next weekend. Anyway, uh, I hope that's useful. Be back soon and um, enjoy the summer.